Yo, what is happening my brews and brewettes? My name is Wayne and welcome to my channel. I wasn't gonna do this review, but it's been requested, so I thought I'd let you guys in on what I felt and what my experience was like on riding the Silverback Slider LT1. I'm gonna call it an experience video. It's not a review video, it's an experience. Intro. Full disclosure, and I can be fully transparent with you guys, I wasn't paid by Silverback for anything. They loaned me the slider to use on my Asian adventure that I went on, and only recently, maybe a few weeks ago, I returned it to them. It's now in their possession again. This is my honest opinion on the bike. With my experience, I found a lot of negatives as well as a lot of positives on this bike. Let's get the history of the company. Silverback was started here in South Africa. Their headquarters is in Germany and that's why they've got the German flag on Silverback bikes now because they're branded as a German company, but they started off here in South Africa. They have a facility here in South Africa. The different spec bikes in the slider range, there's the LT1, which I had, so I'm just gonna refer to that bike specifically. I'm gonna let you know the changes I made because there were changes that I did make and why I made them as well. It's an alloy frame. The frame comes specced out with a RockShox Monarch Plus. That's the piggyback shock. The slider LT, which I guess stands for long travel, is a 160 millimeter, 27.5 inch bike. 160 millimeters of travel at the back and 160 millimeters of travel at the front. The fork in the front is the RockShox Revelation. Full spec on this bike, you can check out the link in the video description below. It will take you to the Silverback page and there you can check out the complete spec on this bike. This bike came kitted out with SRAM's GX Eagle 12 speed group set. It had a 125 millimeter dropper, Shimano Dior brakes, so entry level brakes. It had Silverback's own branded dropper post. Huge shout out to my Patreon subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting my channel and the adventures as well. If you aren't a Patreon subscriber, consider subscribing there. There is a lot of stuff that doesn't make it onto the YouTube platform that the rest get to see. Check in the video description below. There'll be a link there. There's a ton of videos on there. You also get early releases, longer videos, and a lot of bonus stuff. Yeah, thank you for watching this video. And remember, punch that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you like the channel. We got videos weekly here. So let's talk about the changes that I made on this bike. So the first thing I changed was the wheel set. I put my 27.5 inch wheels on. They are carbon wheels. Another thing I also changed was the whole cockpit in the front end. So I put my Ragley 50 millimeter stem on there. I put my Truvative Jerome Clements bars on. They're carbon bars. I also put my grips on and I put my fork on the front end as well. I want my fork on there, I want to like boost this bike up, I don't want like an entry level bike. So let's get down to the positives of this bike and what I enjoyed about this bike. Firstly, this bike has got a flip chip, which is a little chip there by the shock that you can flip and it changes the geometry on the bike. The slack setting will lower your BB slightly and just slacken the bike out. And the steep setting will raise the BB up a bit and vice versa. The bike is built like a brick house and it really felt like a tank out in the trail it's an alloy frame it feels like a tank when you are riding it it feels like a tank when you're lifting it up it's a decent ride for the price point bike that you're getting check out the website for the exact price because that will fluctuate but it was a decent price at the filming of this video i will say that this bike was confidence inspiring but then again i also did feel sketchy in some places riding this bike that i wouldn't really feel on my bike. But we're talking like huge price gaps now. A couple of thousand dollars more. Pears and apples, friends. The flip chip is either gonna steepen or slacken the head tube angle by half a degree. So I had it in a slack setting, which was 65.5 degrees. It's not super slack. It's got decent suspension. It's got decent stability. It was, um, climbing was also decent. It's a middle of the range type of bike. The negatives of this bike is that it is built like a tank. It's a heavy bike, it's over 15 kilograms, so don't expect a super light bike. Even specced out with the carbon wheels and the RockShox Lyric up front with my carbon handlebars, it was still over 15 kilograms. There's a silver lining. You're gonna get a lot fitter riding this bike. So if you climb a lot of this bike, 
you're gonna be a beast of a climber. Don't expect a massive amount of plushness on this bike because it's very progressive. The suspension was really harsh. I don't know if it was the RockShox Monarch Plus that was creating the harshness or if it was just the whole suspension platform, but it was extremely harsh and I didn't enjoy it at all. I felt a lot of the trail chatter out in the trail. Geometry is a bit outdated for the bike it is, so it's not as slack as what the newer Enduro bikes are or the reach is not as long as what the newer Enduro bikes are. The wheelbase is still kind of short. The RockShox revelation that this bike comes out with, oh, get rid of that as soon as you get it because it's rubbish. I did not get on with that fork at all. Small bump compliance is terrible on there. The dropper post is also quite short. It's only 125 mm dropper post. I'm used to a 170 mm dropper post nowadays. The saddle that this bike comes specced out with was too narrow for me. It wasn't the most comfortable saddle, but saddles are a personal thing. The flat bars that this bike comes specced out with, you may enjoy them. I don't like flat bars, so um, yeah, I changed them out as soon as I got them. Another thing is that the grips that this bike comes out with are terrible. Here's the thing. I don't ride with gloves much. I ride nudie. It's only special occasions that I put gloves on. Riding with these grips that this bike comes out with was like a painful experience. They are extremely hard. It feels like plastic instead of rubber. It kind of like ripped calluses off my hands. It's like gripping on a wood rasp. Now, if you've got gloves, it's probably a different story, but if you do ride gloveless, be aware, change these grips out because they suck. And then let's get to the issues that I had with this bike. Firstly, the biggest issue I had was the dropper lever. That actually snapped off. It's just a terribly designed dropper lever with inferior materials. To be honest, I'm not like the biggest fan of Shimano brakes because I do find that they're inconsistent. Two weeks into my trip, I'm riding this gnarly descent, really steep. My one brake starts pulling all the way to the lever and I'm like, oh. This is not good. The next day I wake up, try the levers again, and it's biting way too quickly. Probably just have needed a burp. I had like the older XTs and they did exactly the same. They were quite inconsistent and they needed to be burped every two weeks or so. That was my experience with the Silverback Slider LT1. One thing about these reviews, it's my opinion. Uh, my opinion isn't gonna be the same as everybody else's. So I do urge you, if you can, to try this bike out for yourself because you might enjoy things that I don't enjoy. Punch that like button if you like the video, subscribe if you like my channel. Thanks for hooking up with me today. I will catch you on the next episode.